Hello, everybody. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Well, it's Wednesday, so it's got to be wonderful. Name your day before the devil does. Well, it's great to be with you again. I pray God's blessing upon you. Pray that you're having a great day. Pray that the blessing of the Lord is just literally overrunning you. That's the plan. Amen. We want to pray for some people that are going through some tragedies in their life. I have a niece that lost her husband yesterday, I believe. We just pray for her today that the Lord would just uh, minister to her in a very special way, minister to her children, and we just pray that God would just uh, help them during this difficult time. There are surely enough things to pray about, eh? When people go through things, we can pray and we can believe God with them and just let them know how much we love them and that we care about them. I want to share with you today some good news in Romans the chapter 2, verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. Now, we are hearers of the word, but we're also doers of the word. It is important that we must realize that when we make a commitment to Christ, that our life is going to change. Things are going to change. My life, the way I used to live, is not the way it is now. A lot of people say, well, God will forgive me. Well, that's true. He will, but I don't want to have my life on ice on thin ice. I want to be able to walk with him as close to him as possible. One day a little boy went to church and he came home and his father asked him, well, what did the preacher preach about today? The little boy said he preached about sin. And the daddy said, well, what did he say about it? He said, stop it. And that's what I'm saying to you today. Stop sinning as a Christian. Come on now. Start living that life that is pure and good before the Lord because people are watching. Jesus is watching. The angels are watching. The Holy Spirit is watching. Our neighbors are watching. So when we say that we are Christian, we just don't say it verbally, but we say it with our hands. We say it with our feet. The Bible tells us in the Word of God that when we receive him and we say that we are Christians, let those who steal, steal no more. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. It says this, Therefore, putting away lying. So if you're a Christian, you don't lie anymore. Amen? Let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, and we are members of one another. Verse 26 be angry and do not sin. We don't do road rage. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has a need. Verse 29, it says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. That is that it may impart grace to the hearers. Verse 30 says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed by the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So when we make a commitment to Christ Jesus verbally, then we need to have our lives uh, come in line with our life. Hi, Cindy. And when you do that, God will be honored and people will listen to what you have to say. A lot of sinners are say, ooh, when a Christian says he's a Christian, but you can't tell the difference between a non-Christian and a Christian. So we must be very careful. Uh, it's found here and now in Zechariah chapter uh, 8, verse 16. These are the things you shall do. Speak each man the truth with his neighbor. 
Give judgment to your gates for truth, justice, and peace. Let none of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor. And do not love a false oath. For all these are things that I hate, says the Lord. So we, I want to stress again to you today, and that is we need to be conscious of our behavior. You can say, well, praise God, I just, you know, received the Lord as my personal Savior, and I go to church, and I do this, and I do that. But if we don't live according to the Bible, then we're in trouble. We're in trouble. I know there's grace. I know there's forgiveness. I know there's love. But this is what Paul says. Keeping God's law is vital to our justification. You can say, well, I'm justified by faith. That's true. But if I continue to live an ungodly life, where is the line drawn? I don't understand. Let's not see how close we can live to the world and still be a Christian. Let's get away from the things of this world and far away from it. Just like that little boy when he went home and his daddy asked him, you know, what did the preacher preach about? Well, he preached about sin. Well, what did he say about it? He said, stop it. <laughs> and I say to you, stop it. Hallelujah. This is, has uh, an important ramification for those who refuse to change their behavior after they receive Christ. When you truly are born again, you're not going to steal anymore. You're not going to get drunk anymore. You're not going to do these ungodly things. I know some people that have slipped and have, after they've been converted to Christ, they got drunk, but they repented and they didn't continue to do it. It was not something that they did every other weekend. All right. And so there are times, yes, as a Christian, we fall down, we fail, but we get up, we dust ourselves off and we keep going. And the longer that we're a Christian, the less mud puddles we should be falling into. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want to stress this today. A lot of people are preaching about the grace of God. It's a sloppy grace that you can go and do some crazy stuff during the week and then go to church and everything is all right. Now, if you're a brand new baby Christian, just a couple of months in the Lord, you know, we can understand but when we say we've been Christian for 10, 15 years and we're still doing ungodly things and we still think we're going to make it, we're on thin ice, okay? I'm not judging you. The Word of God is judging you and I'm just telling you. So be careful. Don't do that. And why would you want to do that in a way? I want to get as closest to the Lord as I can because I love him. I don't want to uh, degrade um, my, my faith and degrade the blood of Jesus, okay? Now, let me read this to you so we get it right. This has an important ramification for those who refuse to change their behavior after accepting Jesus as their Savior. Failure to keep God's law is sin, okay? And those who sin will be judged by the law. And the wages of sin is death. Jesus himself says, I tell you, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. And I believe that word repent means change of life. Now, I've been reading and studying in the book of Revelation where it says, if you take the mark during the tribulation, which none of us plan to be there, amen, but the people that are going to be there, if they take the mark, then God will damn them to a sinner's hell, okay? But if they do not take the mark, then the Antichrist marks them and damns them and makes sure they don't get anything to eat and they're being damned. I mean, when they take the mark, they can eat, but they'll be damned forever, for eternity. So once again, it is a choice. And you and I make that choice. When we receive Christ, I want to get close to him. I don't want to be far away from him I want to be close to him. I want my mouth to add up with the lifestyle that I'm living. Amen. One day they asked this blind man, 
Why do you go to church? You can't see the preacher. You're half deaf. You can hardly hear him. But every Sunday you want to go to God's house. And the man said, I want my neighbors to know whose side I'm on. You know, your lifestyle will tell your neighbors whose life you're living for. When you live for Christ, the world will acknowledge there is a man, there is a woman that's living for Jesus. Now listen to me. Even the sinner knows what you're supposed to do. And God wants you and I to live that life that is pure before the Lord. You can read that now. Okay, that's a good one. Ezekiel 39, 6 and 7. Thank you, uh, Miss Allen. That's great. I'll have to write that down in my notes so when I preach this again sometime, I'll have some more ammunition. So this is right from the Word of God. So I want to pray for you today. If you are struggling with a sin that so easily besets you, get some help. Get into the Word. Discipline yourself. And be accountable to somebody. God wants you to have the victory in Jesus' name. And you know what sin does as for, for a Christian? Sin drains your energy. Sin takes away things. It doesn't add. And so I just want to encourage you today. Be like that preacher said. Stop sinning as a Christian consistently. We all make mistakes. Brother Hofer has fallen into the mud puddle many times after my conversion. But it's less each day that goes by, and I give God glory for it. Now, need to be careful who you're hanging out with. If you're hanging out with people who are loose, loosies, then you need to stop hanging around those people. You need to hang around people that are mature Christian people that do not sin, that walk with God. So be careful who you hang out with as Christian people. Because sometimes you like to hang out with people that do the same rotten things you do so there's no conviction. But when you are with a dedicated Danny, hallelujah, and oh, I'm telling you, when you're around those folks and you do something wrong, it'll bring conviction to you. So I want to encourage you as a Christian, maybe there's some Christian people that you might have to excuse yourself from because they are not living the life that they should be living. I remember when I was a brand new Christian, I could not hang out with my old friends. Oh, I wish I could tell you that I went back to the guys that I ran with and I told them Jesus came into my heart and they all fell down on their knees and repented. Oh, I wish I could tell you that, but I can't. I had to stay away from them. They laughed at me. They wouldn't, I, I remember one time I went to this place to work and they found out I was Christian. I had the whole cafeteria to myself. That's right. But I didn't care because I knew what I came from. And so you need to realize if you say verbally that you're a Christian, your hands need to produce what your mouth is saying. Okay? I think it's a good idea. It's good. Well, I'm only giving you the Bible, and the Bible will set you free. I'm looking forward for tomorrow. It's going to be Thursday, so it's going to be thrilling. Thank you, people, for participating. I just got a memo this morning. We're making the final dates for me to go to Pennsylvania to minister in two federal prisons there. Can you believe it? And then I'm going to be preaching at a church somewhere there in Pennsylvania. I just praise God for that. And so I want you to just pray with us. We need monthly supporters that will do something each month. May it be $10 or whatever the amount God speaks to your heart. This will help me to go. I think something is happening. I never dreamed that I'd be preaching in federal prisons. And, and, and the receptivity that I received from them guys, it was like Uncle Gordy has come to see us. I mean, it was wonderful. And I just pray that there will be revival in these two prisons there in Pennsylvania. So please pray for us. And I'm going to be this Saturday in uh, uh, Skyway Church.
of the Valley in Goodyear, Arizona. Going to be there Saturday for a convention at 1030 a.m. I'll be speaking. Well, God bless you. Thank you for everything. You're my friends, and we're friends forever. Esta noche, la grande campaña de cantante y predicar norteamericana. Esta noche en Iglesia, no falte. Bye-bye. Have a great day.